hello guys welcome back to our channel we are so excited to have you again the Oyo state house of assembly is putting the governor governor shei makinde under intense pressure because they are right now so tired of what the fulani haters have been doing in Oyo state we know that this whole saga about fulani haters doing a lot of things an eviction notice coming to them via um the yoruba activist sunday bowo is as a result of the level of negligence on the part of the government towards fighting these people don't also forget that this same Oyo state uh, assembly had already issued the prohibition for open grazing you know they've passed it into law so right now they are putting the governor under pressure to do something to see how he can curb this whole issue and also in another news which you're going to hear three um social cultural group or call them ngos are really after um the governor of benway state they are blasting the man left right center for what for talking to the president the way he did you're going to hear the exact words that they use in blasting mr uh, uh, governor otomi of benue state all right but before we continue with details of the news and further analysis if you've not subscribed to our channel just hit on the red subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you can get notification anytime we publish our videos and according to the news the your state house of assembly on tuesday urged the state government to without wasting more time set up open grazing prohibition tax force mm. The assembly urged the government, led by engineer Shei Makinde, to set up the tax force in order to ensure full implementation of the anti-open hearing and grazing law in the state. It was recalled that the state house of assembly had earlier passed the anti-open grazing law. It was, however, gathered that the law is yet to be fully implemented in the state. The house of assembly, in its suggestion on Tuesday, said that all hands must be on deck at the moment to ensure that the high rate of killing, kidnapping, banditry and robbery, car clash and other form of crime across the state are addressed and reduced drastically. It was also gathered that the, his suggestion was made in view or this suggestion was made in view of the current security situation the state is facing. The House made this disclosure as part of its resolution while deliberating on how to stem the tie of insecurity in the state. The motion jointly sponsored by the duo of Babajide Adebayo and Honorable Kazim Iziaka noted that insecurity, which has assumed a worrisome dimension across the state, is having its toil on the social economic activities of the people. The House said the issue of header stroke farmer clashes and destruction of farmland by cattle would only be addressed if the state government commends full implementation of anti-open hearing and grazing law already passed into law. The lawmakers added that in line with the provision of the law, there is the need for the state government to establish open grazing prohibition tax force. They argued that the tax force would ensure that the law is fully implemented and ensure full compliance with the law. The House then charged its Committee on Agriculture to liaise with the state government on the process of implementing the anti-open grace. In another news, three civil society organizations have condemned the attack on President Muhammadu Buhari by Governor Samuel Otum of Benue over the activities of criminal headsmen in the country. The group are Nigerian Project Initiative, Initiative to Save Democracy and Global Economic Policy Initiative. Otum was reported to have accused the president of being lenient towards criminal headsmen. However, the leader of the groups, Mr. Mohamed Salihu, Akinlo Ye James, and Mr. Ben Arokri, in a joint statement in Abuja on Tuesday, dismissed the allegation against the president by the governor. According to him, according to them, it is cheap and sensational for Tom to blame Buhari for the ills of his government and the state, saying the truth is that Otom is Otom's problem not anyone's else i like to repeat that he said the truth is that otom is otom's problem not anyone else 
The same man read in part, we react to the widely circulated attack on the president by Governor of Benue State Samuel Otum, the summary of which is the allegation that President Muhammadu Buhari is lenient towards criminal hatesmen. As friends of the presidency would like to defend the president by saying that contrary to the wrong assertion of the governor, President Buhari is a patriotic, nationalistic and fair-minded leader who at all times ready to defend the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria mm. he is a leader committed to the defense of the right of all citizens majority and minority including ethnic and religious minority meting out justice without fear or favor when crimes are committed under buhari's government the climate of impunity has been banished governor otum is himself a witness to this when buhari state Oh, sorry, Benue State suffer attacks by criminal hitsmen and bandits. President Buhari traveled to Makodi, addressed the community, offers sympathy and support, and other law enforcement agencies to take appropriate action against the criminal. The Benue State Governor Samuel Otum, on the other hand, is a fair leader with nothing to show to his people for all the years he has been in office. Under him, religious tension have intensified, inter-ethnic violence has remained pervasive. His contribution to Benue State in the last six years is seen more in the increased incident of religiously and ethnically motivated criminal violence throughout the state. The group also stressed the need for the governor to do better in addressing issues of violence between farmers and haters. He must do better on the issues of violence against women, government corruption, extrajudicial killing, and the mayhem unleashed by state-supported cultists and vigilante groups. The governor needs to be more responsive to the feelings and yearning of his people. A governor who collects monthly subventions from the center, collects bailout funds from Buari as do many other governors, but fail to pay workers and pensioners, should look at himself in the mirror to determine where his problem is from. Mm, this one is a serious barging. Now, if, if you look at Nigeria very well, you realize that we have pressure groups as people who may kind of put pressure on the government or castigate the government where they are not performing superbly. But unfortunately, right now, we also have anti pressure group. Whenever you castigate the government of the day, there are another group of people who will come after you. Fairly recently, we've heard that there's going to be another, that the youths were talking about having another um, protest because of the fact that Lekito Gate has been opened. All of a sudden, another group also came out, an anti-group of that particular decision came out and they said they are ready to defend Lagos State and there is nothing like protest again from the youth. So now uh, that that's uh, the new style now of governance in Nigeria. Pressure group, anti-pressure group. You want to go on protest, another group will come to antagonize you and stop you from whatever you're doing. But however, um, let's look at some very key things there. First of all, let's look at the first news. And um, the first news talked about a lot of things which I feel uh, we have to take into consideration. Yes. And let me start by saying this. Governors need to realize that they owe their people a responsibility, and that is to protect life and property. And not just owing them a responsibility, you must realize they need to swiftly act so that whatever you are doing will not just be reactive. You need to be proactive enough, and when you are proactive, you will be able to stop the trouble early than later you understand if you if you are proactive if you start to foresee a problem and you take some frank step towards solving it you will realize that your people will not feel the pain much that's the major problem we have in our country now look at the issue of your state already they had an open grazing anti-open grazing bill that was you know passed into law which means that um that those open grazing policy cannot be active except there are some driving force you know a kind of a tax force that will drive it that tax force can be working alongside a motekun to see how they can stop it. any form of anti sorry any form of open grazing but that wasn't done 
And that is why your state ended up losing some very lustrous sons. You understand? If they have done this thing early enough, all of this katakata that we are seeing in your state to a point where an individual need to wake up to help the government of the day wouldn't have been there. Ibo would never be here anyway again. You understand? But because of how snail-like the government of the day had been towards fighting you know this whole, whole issue it made them to be in this situation now look at what the house of assembly is saying they're trying to put pressure hey you've got to wake up this is not the time to doze and sleep our people are suffering we are seeing our people being killed we have banditry activities of banditry via this fulani guys is increasing our geometrical progression you've got to wake up that's not how it should be you, you should be so much given to your people. Yeah, I know. As a governor, multiple things are on his table. He needs to solve this. Some are coming from the federal government. That is why we have a cabinet. Yeah. That's why we have people who have to help him to work. The commissioners are there. Special assistants who represent him in different avenues that are there. Listen to those people. Create a session where you have meetings with them. They should bring out some of the topmost issues, especially as it concerns the people. You understand? Those are the main most, as it concerns the people, yeah, they, they bring it out and you start solving them. Yeah, because coming to put you under pressure like this clearly shows that you are not a performer. Uh, that's the truth though, you are not a performer, performer because if you were a performer, you wouldn't have waited till your people tell you, say, it's time oh, without delay, you don't delay too much, bros. Without delay, wake up, wake up, wake up, attend to our issues. Yeah, he needs to move immediately. Your state governor needs to at least be proactive. A young guy, you know, yeah, we know myriads of issues are there, but hey, you've got to be proactive. Wake up and hit the ball rolling. That's what we are waiting to see. And then the issue of these uh, uh, three groups coming after autumn and for me i've always been very objective yeah because that's journalism you know when you're talking about editorial you need to be realistic give your own opinion and i try to be very objective now look at the issue here autumn was complaining that nothing has been done against these people i know he has some of there are some mistakes because um why i say there are some things that he has done which is not right number one is he would have formed passing to law for a certain persons, you know, to uh, be there to fight against all this issue of banditry and Fulani Hazmen and all of that, because I believe that the state have that right to even form a militia group, to form a vigilante group, make sure that it is passed into law, carry the a police uh, commissioner in your state along and ensure that you give them the relevant regulations and they jump into action. So you don't have to always go to the federal government to come and fight insecurity in your state. It's really uncalled for. So there I know he has made mistakes. But then these people are talking about, these three groups are talking about how super... Um, performer the president is in terms of the issue of insecurity and all of that the question is yes the president gave a mandate that those who had done whatever they have done they should be brought to book by the security agencies the question is how many people were brought to book that's the big question the first time the president has openly spoken that i've heard and for me i said thumbs up to him was just yesterday or so yesterday or day before yesterday when he came, he came up and say a criminality is criminality irrespective of any group and all of that if anyone is found with crime found with uh, arms he should be arrested and prosecuted according to the provision of the law that was the first time maybe he has been saying it but this was when it was so open and that's what we are looking at and the group that is coming to castigate and all of that, I noticed that they were uh, backlashing the, 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 the governor of uh, own, uh, sorry of Benue State as if they had been an existing problem between him and them. They call themselves the friends of the president. It doesn't work like that, though. What really matters right now is not you being the friend of the president. It is about the people. So if we are advising, it's not to you for you to tear this guy into pieces and all of that. Give him the kind of um, advice you want to give him, submissions you have for him. Not to just, you know, start telling stories of how he is encouraging violence and all of that. For me, it does not make any good sense. I tell you the truth. I'd like to leave you guys with it. Go to our comment section. Let's interact. What's your position on this issue?